without community, there is certainly no liberation, no future, only the most vulnerable and temporal armistice between me and my oppression. Tracy was far more important than simply filling an office, mm -hmm. and you know, like had so many other roles that she also played. Mm -hmm. um, so that being one of like you know this isn't just a nobody. This is somebody who's connected to pretty much everything you know about here, and then also mm -hmm. really driving home the point of the way that the administration gets over these kinds of issues is it just cycles students out. Not having her here, of course, is gonna you know have me asking questions. And I have the right to ask questions. Everybody has the right to ask what's happening. It's not precisely that we want Andrew from, from Laura, but like it's also because we want so people from other grades to be like aware of what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. She, she disappeared. She didn't leave. You know, like people leave. You say goodbye to people when they leave. You know, you, you, uh, yeah, you. You say your farewells, you, you talk and you celebrate them leaving because if they're, you know, an important person to you, you have that time. But I, I don't, she didn't leave, I, I don't know, she didn't, she just disappeared. They made her disappear, like in a week. It's a whole bigger issue than just Tracy Peterson not being in here anymore. It's a, how she was dismissed from her position, the fact that to the best of my knowledge, students left campus for winter break and the next day she was told to clear out her office. And then three weeks after that, we all get an email saying that she's not going to be here anymore and the Office of Multicultural Affairs is not going to be here anymore and they're making it a new name. In governance of the educational institution around which our community exists, most groups and committees use a consensus process. At times, an individual is charged with making a decision. In, neither ca in either case, those responsible should invite input, consult broadly, and listen carefully, especially to those who have a deep understanding of the situation who will be affected by the decision. I think that people are upset for many reasons, not just about Tracy in general, but then again, it is about Tracy in general, but it's also more about students' relationships with the administration in general. I think that this is an example of something that has been bothering students for a long time in terms of talking and getting student input about the changes that really do affect students' lives dramat dramatically. So I think that there's like, Tracy is like a boiling over moment of like, this, is, this happened last year and there was these protests at graduation and I think that this should just like happen again and people are just chose to pursue other options which you know that's always bullshit so I hope that Tracy's doing well I hope that she's enjoying what she's doing now because I'm probably pretty sure that the atmosphere is not the most conducive for, I guess, if they didn't want to renew her contract, like, I don't know. I just seen, you know, as many of us know that there's just been a, seems to be a project of the new administration that because we got like brand new, completely brand new administration all over. It seems like they want to take Earl Mott down a new path that they think is the best for everybody. And maybe we're stuck in our old ways a little bit and like the way things that used to be. But I don't know. I really think it's unfortunate that the the way that they let the whole student body know was through a like two paragraph email that really didn't say anything. But her contract was chosen not to be extended. I don't even know if he said that. He kind of just said like, 
Tracy has chosen to pursue other options, which is like the same thing. When like people are like, well, you could either be fired or resign. You know what I mean? You have two options here, type thing. It's like never really the way that it sounds. But yeah, the, the school has lost a lot when at the loss of Tracy. And I don't know if, the sad part is, I don't know if they realize just how much he's touched students' lives. Well, I don't know, it's gonna be, it's weird talking about yourself and why students are, why students love you so much. Okay. And why students feel lost without you. But I feel like you do know the answers to that. Okay, let me get quiet. I need okay. to have a little worship so I can figure out if there's something I have to say. My silences had not protected me. Your silence will not protect you. But for every real word spoken, for every attempt I had ever made to speak those truths for which I am still seeking, I had made contact with other women while we examined the words to fit a world in which we all believed, bridging our differences. Sierra Diamond Philippa Mohammed from Brooklyn, New York. Dad is black, not an American citizen. Mother is white from South Florida, little girl Jewish lady. Like, had a bat mitzvah when I was 13. You don't find a lot of people like me, but I'm not gonna defend myself for being who I am. I am this like, smaller than quote unquote UF female height person. I am a woman. I have more indigenous and African African Caribbean features than white features. Um, I'm queer and in this campus I'm known as gay. I am from Costa Rica. English is not my first language. But on the other hand, I'm like a motherfucker with a full scholarship who went to a private school in the middle of India for two years and it doesn't have to worry about student loans and it's always giving the entitlement of like being able to speak because people are going to listen to you sometimes within the activist rooms that I have been at Erlen, I feel because I have built that image of like Maria Jose Ramos. You know diversity is certainly very important at Erlen. Um, but um, diversity, as far as I, um, the way that I think about it really is so connected to social justice. And so um, when you're looking um, or searching for truth or learning about truth and truth, I'm going to put in quotation marks. Um, it really means grappling with those real issues of um, social justice and um, in the academy are there opportunities to really um, test the theories that students are learning about in the classroom with the real issues that an institution may face. Mm. I don't know, I was talking to a friend today, or rather he was talking to me, um, about how he feels, should I talk to you? How he feels like frustrated about activism in campus, because um, it doesn't need anywhere necessary. And like sometimes I feel that way, like sometimes I feel like this is a big joke. You know, like the entire institution kind of is just a big, big joke. So at the end of the day, it's like, it's um, 
institution that it is a, mis it's a business, at the end of the day, it's a business. And um, we're learning. I like the way that I see some of the activism in campus um, is that we're learning how to actually do activism later. So it's not like we are like actually being activists for some cases. In the cases that are related to like real people, I think it's different. Um, as in like protesting because like, the thing that happened with Anna and Tracy, I don't necessarily think that that's a training for like you know, being an activist. I think that's real. Everyone in this room, everyone in the community has some handle with like their inner life of what the truth is. Whether or not you believe in like absolute truth, that's irrelevant. But the fact is we are all supposed to work together to decide what's best as a community for the community. So if the administration isn't willing, you know, to listen to that community, to do something for them, or ESG, I feel like what is being said a lot is that we need to figure out a way to talk, you know, but as people in positions of authority, your voice gets heard more than, you know, the anonymous members of the community, because it's not possible to listen to everyone. There needs to be ways to listen. I feel like what's not being emphasized is listening <coughs> on all sides. And, you know, it's about the fact that we are molding a community together. So if you shut down part of a community, you silence them, you say, you know what, this isn't important right now. Like, if no one, like the school's not going to die because all these changes are happening. Things will keep going. I'm going to graduate. I'm going to graduate. People will forget this, you know. But you will lose this community and you will lose what is unique about this college. You will become like every other college like, that's a liberal arts school in the Midwest. And that's fine. That can happen. But that's not our own, that's not what I know. And losing that Quaker light, that you know, emphasis on truth and what is the right thing to do, not what is the you know expedient or easy thing to do, is you know atrocious. Oh, but I would say that you just have to keep marsh marshalling on. You have to keep going, and um, it's it's not really dependent on one person. I mean, uh, certainly I had a particular role and I felt like I was being true to what I understood um, Spirit to be guiding me to do. Um, but in the end, each student um, and faculty or staff need to, you know, reflect on themselves and how they understand themselves working in community and students have enormous amount of power um, and they ought to utilize it in ways that um, up or create the beloved community or create the institution in which they, they hope to see. We left behind How shall we Yeah. 
have your space out here to talk to the people. Please. We were told we're at least posted on the please on the please on the please on the this is their space today. They have it scheduled. <laughs> and all this. of them have expressed extreme interest in knowing what we like. And you, ha you have an opportunity right here. Yeah, right here. 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 Right I mean, we are a community here, like, I mean, this is all our space. It's important for us to share with you our frustration. We want to, like, include, we don't want to be exclusive. I would like to It is, but lunch for lunch for It's because we love this place, I don't think. It's because people value this place. It's because people think... It's because this place has uh, influenced a lot of us, has changed a lot of us in way, um, many different ways, you know. Um, and I don't, I don't know if we can achieve that. At, we can, I don't think we can achieve the uniqueness of Erlon if we keep going in the direction that we're going right now. I think that's what people are scared of. I've been at F Earlham 15 years, and, um, you know, things change. People are always scared of change. We don't know what, what change will bring us, and uh, it's normal for people to react uh, to changes. And it's also, it's not normal for people to listen, but it should be, as Earlham, like, we should we should be listening to each other. Tracy Peterson wasn't only there for students of color. She was also there for students of sexual assault. She was there for students who didn't have parents there for them. And so that in itself encompasses a whole new range of students that you can't put race, you can't put class, you can't put gender on it. And that is what's beautiful about UC Student Coalition because it encompasses all of that. Why is it that a student coalition formed around the like non-renewal of Tracy Peterson's contract? We're like finally being like, all right, I'm not gonna fight into this anymore. I'm actually gonna tell you like all the things that I have been hating since I came here. And it made it seem more like it was centered more on Tracy because well, that was the most recent thing that happened, and also because people were starting to talk from that point, since it was so personal. Yeah. Where are my resources on campus to go to as a first year? Well, there's no more multicultural affairs office, so there really is nowhere for me to go. We have a relatively new faculty, um, and so there's lots of training that has to happen. Um, uh, around differences and you know I think sometimes doing that in-house training is effective but oftentimes it's not the best way to go because who is going to talk about their own isms and interrogate that with somebody that they're going to have to work with every day so usually uh, the most effective training happens when you have somebody who comes from the outside and then is able to leave um, but I think certainly um, we're at a period now um, since it's been 10 to 12 years since the diversity vision statement was created um, that we're in a cycle where training needs to happen. Who feels confident, honestly, in their understanding of the process of consensus, the process of consultation, and how they need our own governance function? I think that needs to be something that we all need to seriously work on because they're brilliant and they're fantastic. I, I, they're, they're wonderful and they are not being used right now <laughs> in any way whatsoever. And I feel like we seriously need to make use of these enlightened processes and really educate ourselves on that because they're, I mean, they make up the ethos of this institution and right now this place is changing so fast and so dramatically. It's disheartening.
<laughs> and furthermore, I just think that in a school that strives for diversity, to me, diversity isn't just about having a diverse student body, right? Because I'm being taught by a lot of people that are not diverse. And when I met with Laura, and I said to her that this is not a diverse st student campus, this is not a diverse faculty campus, whether it's administration or support, tests, support staff or teaching faculty, she's like, well, how do you know it's not diverse, Sierra? It's like, because I look around and I don't see anyone that looks like me. I do want to say, I'm going to say it, and then you can decide if you feel like it's appropriate. I think it's wholly, I, I, you know, I think I need to go on record as saying it's wholly within Laura Hutchinson's purview to have whomever she wants to work on her staff. And as a person who is trying to build um, a, a, a staff, um, she, she was charged to do that. Um, uh, in a time of significant change at the college, um, it's certainly within her right to do that. One of the things that's happening across the country, it's not just at Earlham, that people who are um, vocal and politically engaged are often, um, if they're not asked to leave the institution <laughs> altogether, they're put so far at the margin in their particular institutions um, that it becomes challenging. I think that the problem is that like, we don't have a political identity. So if you don't know what you're representing and what, what that idea is and what people want, then you can't represent anyone. I wonder to what extent that might be related to the fact that Tracy, for being a lesbian African American woman, is often or can be seen as not necessarily someone who manipulates, but like like a raging, uncontrollable person who is able to like control you know, others. And, you know, of course, the students cannot think by themselves, so we need someone to be telling us what to do all the time, right? And precisely that was the argument that I was given towards the end of last semester when the um, people who were graduating protest protested on graduation. People were like, oh, yeah, this was um, Anna Cornelia, they organized that. I'm like, why can you give credibility to students? That's even, like, insulting. Like, why can you thing that students will actually come up with this plan and actually put it in effect. Um, and I wonder to what extent if, if it will have been a white male instead of Tracy, people will think that the students were the ones doing it and not that person. You know, it seems that people are more likely to blame minorities than not, right? I do want to say that I feel like people need to, I think, trust students. And it feels like there's a lack of trusting students' abilities. Like, you know? And that is sad. It's not that you're perfect and that you'll do things right. And of course, Tons of students make silly, 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 and often and sometimes dangerous mistakes. But fundamentally, there should be a level of trust and uh, capacity or ability to meet students, even when you firmly disagree.
if we are accountable as students to our administration and to our faculty, and if our faculty is accountable to us as students and to our administration, I, I mean, we're not going to probably replace the president, but like, there's no reason that Laura Hutchinson doesn't get a student review. There's no reason. <laughs> Process for administration as well. Let's write it regardless. We'll just get out. Yeah, I mean, we can make a book for you just like we made for Tracy, but it won't be as beautiful. <laughs> the goal of radical democratic multi multiculturalist is not the liberal inclusion of representative numbers of, of blacks, Latinos, and others into the literary canon, media and cultural mainstream, but the radical democratic restructuring of the system of cultural and political power itself. It is to rethink the entire history of this country, redefining its heritage in order to lay claim to its future. It is to redefine America itself. Do you feel like minorities are safe and welcome everywhere on campus? Absolutely not. I hope that in student development that um, as they continue to hire people that they will hire people understanding that um, this campus is diverse and that there is a need to have um, faculty or administrative faculty who are reflective of the student population and at this point in student development that's not the case. This time they have not just silenced, they've exiled. This is political, you are revolution, you are mother of soul, of struggle, doors closed by closed minds, they call it rebranding. We know what to call it eradication of voices that care. You are force, invoking immeasurable inspiration within the children that you have weaned into honesty, power. Is it fear that has landed us here? Here, a place harder each day to recognize as an institution of peace. There are no guns used, but we see the violence in exile. They take away our mothers here. There is no conversation. There is desecration. So we become sole defense. Eradication of difference has no place in beloved communities. Beloved mother, you have led us to a place of power where the only use for silence is to nourish oppression. There is no silence in this sacred place today. Your voice guides us and calms us and empowers us. Beloved mother, strong people may not need strong leaders, but you have made us strong. You have made us into leaders. Today, I carry anger. Tomorrow, distrust, loss, but always and closest to me. Beloved mother, I live grateful for you.